Thanks to Merlin for supporting my channel. Is it Comet going to come and hit Earth and wipe out the entire, almost the entire human population? I don't know. I don't do that kind of science. But that is the plot of Don't Look Up, and I thought it would be fun to do a reaction video to it as a scientist, science communicator, and science policy advocate who saw a lot of uh, familiar things in the first hour or so of this film. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below for the types of videos that you'd like to see in 2022. All right, let's get started with this movie. For you, Kate, to comment Okay, so one of the first things that caught my eye in this film is, I guess, within the first like minute or so, is the beer celebration scene after Leonardo DiCaprio's graduate student discovers a comet. Now, this is something that I thought was interesting because I feel like whether or not this actually happens in your lab depends a lot on your advisor. So some advisors do do this and also don't necessarily do it because there was some interesting new finding. It's just what happens on Fridays in the lab. Other advisors really don't have this familiar relationship with their graduate students, so this could be accurate, but it depends a lot on how your advisor is, who they are, how they like to relate to their grad students and stuff like that. And uh, was this professor the one who first made the observation? Here's another interesting point. So in this film, Kate Dibiowski, who is Leonardo DiCaprio's graduate student, actually is the one who originally discovers the comet that is going to wipe out the earth, right about all life on earth. And one of the things that comes up early on is that when they reach out to the federal government to essentially tell everyone that this is an issue that needs to be dealt with, a lot of the government officials seem to be concerned that the professor in charge, or the person in charge, was not the one who discovered this and said it was a PhD candidate, which I am also. However, it is usually the PhD students, the graduate students in the lab, who tend to discover these types of groundbreaking things, and that's not because the PI isn't a fairly intelligent person, it's mostly because the graduate students are the people who are actually doing the day-to-day -day work in the lab, and the advisor generally isn't. Now, in this film, Leonardo DiCaprio actually mentions that he hasn't published recently, so he may be more involved in the hands-on research than your average PI is, but usually advisors, especially when you get to institutions that are R1, so places like Harvard, MIT, Stanford, usually those advisors aren't in the lab ever. <laughs> Uh, and so they're not the people who are discovering the interesting things on a day-to-day -day basis. Scientists who went to uh, the prestigious schools of Harvard, Princeton, etc., they confirmed the data. So we would like to offer you a... Okay, this is a really interesting common misconception, and it's specifically related to Jonah Hill's comment about getting some Ivy League people in here. There is a really common misconception on behalf of the general public that people who research at places like Harvard and MIT are the top tier researchers in every field, and that just isn't the case. Now, I don't know a ton about Michigan State's astronomy department, but it's really not uncommon for the leading researchers in a particular field to not go to these Ivy League brand name universities that everyone's heard of. So when I see comments like this, and I, I've seen comments like this you know, in this movie and also in the real world, all the time you don't necessarily want the Ivy League researchers to the people validating work that may or may not say that the end of the world is nigh. A lot of the time you want the person who is the leader in the field and that person might be faculty at Michigan State or somewhere else. Also, apparently Jonah Hill went for uh, the human embodiment of the fire Festival in terms of his character and I, I really do think that comes through. I, I really think he nailed that, so props to Jonah Hill. Uh, heartbeats and... Your vitals show that you are sad. This will cheer you up. Peter. Oh, okay. So this is actually... This this character is generally fascinating. I feel like it's supposed to be a, a cross between, I guess, uh, Tim Cook and Elon Musk, um, which is kind of an interesting cross to go for. But... Having sentiment recognition in mobile devices is actually something that Apple in particular has publicly shown a lot of interest in and said that they're planning on deploying in iPhones in the near future. It has not happened yet, um, but it is something that is 
essentially on, on the minds of the people who are developing the smartphones of the future. Now, in terms of whether or not it's actually possible to do that, that becomes a little bit more complicated. If you want a video on machine learning and sentiment analysis, leave a comment down below. Um, but essentially, sentiment recognition is still kind of an iffy field. And it depends a lot on the method that you use to do it. So whether you're looking at someone's facial expressions, whether you're listening to their voice, et cetera. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that as human beings, we are able to express emotions on our face that we may not actually be feeling on the inside. So all we can work with when it comes to data is other people's assumptions as to what certain expressions on our faces mean, as well as self-reported data, which may or may not be 100% accurate. The bottom line is you guys told us the science was 100%. Yeah, this is uh, a common issue when it comes to communicating science with the larger public in the sense that the general public tends to want absolute answers to things. In fact, the last two years of the global pandemic have been a great example of that. And science doesn't typically work that way. It tends to work more in percentages and likelihoods. And so on one hand, I think it's actually great that, you know, there are these other researchers who are checking their work, who are performing similar experiments, who are trying to essentially replicate their findings because that's how science works. Um, but also most studies aren't quite as timely and um, the, the potential to be wrong doesn't result in a human extinction event. So it would definitely be nice to see the government display some good uh, scientific thinking and evidence-based policy in this movie and uh, maybe prepare a little bit more for something that may or may not happen at the end of the film. In fact, I'm sure a lot of the characters in this movie would have benefited a lot from taking Brilliant's course on scientific thinking. So if you'd like to be better prepared than they were, I'd highly recommend checking out Brilliant who are kindly sponsoring today's video. If you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know it's an online interactive STEM learning platform built off the principle of active problem solving. The new year is always a great time for a fresh start and to build new habits. And Brilliant has an ever growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that will help you learn concepts by working through them in visual hands-on ways. In fact, Brilliant recently updated a bunch of their courses to be even more interactive, which I really appreciate as someone who prefers using visual and physical intuition over rote memorization. For instance, many people know the boiling point of water, but do you know how the solidity affects that temperature or if it does at all? Fortunately, Brilliant's recently updated scientific thinking course has this great hands-on experiment to let you discover the truth for yourself, and it's just one of the course's many interactive exercises that let you experience the principles of science firsthand. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Jordan or click on the link in the description, and the first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. If you'd like to see me react to artificial intelligence in the MCU films, you can check that out up here. Again, if you have video ideas for 2022, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, you can follow me on all my various socials down here, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!